You can now generate beautiful AI images and this right inside ChatGPT. That is, if you are a plus user for now. And this without having to come up with complicated prompts or even figuring out how a Discord server works. <coughs> the journey. The tech is called DAL E3 and it's by far the easiest way to generate AI images. In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started with DAL E3. Let's go. What is up everyone, Ronnie here. Welcome back to our channel. This is the right place if you want to learn about Canva, AI, ChatGPT, image generation. We cover all of these topics right here on the channel. Today we are going to take a deep dive into OpenAI's DALL-E 3, which is the image generator that is integrated with ChatGPT. I'm really going to cover every single aspect of DALL-E 3, but before we do so, you need to know one important thing. My goal for this video is to bring you up to speed and show you how easy it is to generate images with DALL-E 3. So let's jump into my presentation and get started. The first thing we need to talk about is who can actually access DALL-E 3. As of today, the date I'm shooting this tutorial, DALL-E 3 is only available as a feature for ChatGPT Plus members. So if you're not a ChatGPT paid member, you will not be able to access DALL-E 3, at least not as of today. So be warned that in order to be able to follow along with me in this tutorial, you will need a paid ChatGPT account or ChatGPT Plus account. Next, let's talk about how it works and why it's a little revolution in the world of AI image generation. So how it works is pretty simple. We are here in a classic ChatGPT conversation. And so I am using common language. For example, here I said, hi, can you help me generate images in here? To which ChatGPT responded, of course, please provide a detailed description of the image you'd like to generate. And I'll create it for you. The more specific and detailed you are, the better results will be. Now, that seems like what any text to image generator would tell you, but there is a difference here. The difference is that we have our good old friend ChatGPT here with us to help us in our journey to create beautiful images. So if we look at the DALL-E landing page right here on OpenAI's website, it says DALL-E is built natively on ChatGPT, which lets you use ChatGPT as a brainstorming partner and refiner of your prompts. So just ask ChatGPT what you want to see in anything from a simple sentence to a detailed paragraph. So we could indeed go the difficult way and write an elaborated prompt like we would in mid-journey, for example. But there's also a shortcut, and that is to rely on ChatGPT's capacities to help us refine the prompt from a simple prompt. So let's go ahead and try that. I'm going to paste a simple prompt right here in the text box, and it goes like this. Can you show me some examples of sleek and modern app UI for an ice cream delivery service. And UI stands for user interface right here. So this prompt is relatively basic. So I'm going to run this prompt and you will see that ChatGPT will be calling DALL-E 3. So it's kind of like how plugins work, but it's just calling and relying on DALL-E 3 for creating some images. Okay, so let's see what it comes up with. And I'm not going to speed up the video so you see the actual speed at which it's been created. And there we go. We have two different UIs right here, one on a phone and another one on a tablet. Looks like an iPad mini. A little bit of text. So here are two examples of sleek and modern app UI designs for an ice cream delivery service. So there you go. You have both of your images. But what is interesting here is that ChatGPT gives me a little bit of extra information for both of these images. But also if I click on one, I can see the entire prompt. So I went from a very basic simple prompt to a more elaborated prompt, but ChatGPT did that refinement work for me, that adding the detail work for me. So this is where the magic lies of using DAL-E integrated with ChatGPT is that we are leveraging the power of ChatGPT to write and refine our prompt. So let me read the entire prompt here. Photo of a sleek and modern app UI on a smartphone. The main screen showcases a variety of ice cream flavors in a 
basic layout. Each ice cream image has a brief description and a price below it. The top of the screen has a search bar and the bottom has navigation icons for home, cart, profile and offers. So there you go. What I can see here is that every single detail, every single part of this prompt has been respected by DAL-E. Okay, so usually when you write elaborated prompts like that on Midjourney or other image generator, parts of your prompt tend to be neglected or just not taken into consideration. But here, and I believe this is something OpenAI has been working really hard on, every single part of the prompt has been considered in generating the image. And so I see that even dealing with text has been relatively well done okay so still some little mistakes here and there but I mean this gives me a pretty decent mock-up I have five fingers not seven and this looks sleek indeed let's have a look at the second one and we'll see that the prompt is different okay so we are having the UI on a tablet the screen displays a carousel this time of featured ice cream flavors with enticing images etc etc so I have my two different UIs here and they look great I mean every single thing looks pretty spot on if you ask me. All right, so that first prompt was pretty convincing to me. And I can see that from there onward, I can say goodbye to complicated prompts, like very detailed prompts, because ChatGPT is going to do that for me. It doesn't mean that I cannot do it anymore. I can, and I'll show you that later in the tutorial. And the second thing I can kiss goodbye to is to go to Discord to start using the best prompt, which up to today, or at least in my opinion, was mid-journey. So bye-bye Discord server and mid-journey journey but also by to writing elaborated prompt and welcome to the era of having a conversation about your images with ChatGPT. Now for the rest of the tutorial I would like to show you a series of prompts that I've been working with. They're not all my prompts those are prompts that I've discovered that I have read on some specialized blog and I tried them and I thought oh this is a pretty cool result that I'm getting here so I wanted to share them with you guys. Also if you are a member of of our channel, meaning if you are part of our paid membership via the join button right here, go check out the community feed because we have shared a post in which we give you the link to a Canva document in which you will have access to all of the prompts I will be showing you today. Plus our little bonus with the 50 different artistic styles to try in your prompt. Again, this is an exclusive perk if you are a member of our channel. Now let me show you some prompts that have been working well for me. The first one is the idea of a mood board, okay? So if you ask ChatGPT to write a prompt for a mood board for a specific topic, you will get some pretty cool results. So the first one I have here is a mood board dedicated to the world of knitting and crocheting. So this is the result I got back from DALL-E and I'm going to click on this image so you can admire it. And you see this very cool set of instruments, set of utensils that you actually need for knitting and crocheting. And you can also read the entire prompt right here, which has been refined by ChatGPT. Illustration of a mood board dedicated to the world of knitting and crocheting. So you can pretty much take the prompt I gave you and simply replace what's in the brackets for anything you like. For example, I tried with Japanese cooking instead of crocheting and knitting. And these are the two results I have been able to generate. So this one, which is more like a realistic photo and then I have this one which is more like an illustration but both of them are quite gorgeous and I really like how they are featured as a flat lay as a set of tools a set of utensils for a specific topic so really like that try that prompt the mood board prompt the next prompt I want to share with you is the website or app UI prompt. And here's the prompt. Could you recommend a few website UIs, so user interfaces, that are both colorful and easy to scroll for a business that sells emoji-shaped bags? So again, you can replace anything really that is in between these square brackets. Like here, instead of website, I could have said app. Instead of colorful and easy to scroll, I could have said sleek and minimalistic or sleek and modern. 
modern or vintage or whatever really I want as an adjective for describing this website. And for a business that sells emoji shaped bags, could be anything, cars, plants, iPhone cases. It really depends on whatever you want to design a website or an app for. So that was my prompt. Now let me show you the results. So this is the first one. This looks like the landing page, the home page of my website. So again, text has been dealt with in a not so great manner, but probably better than many other text to image generators. And here is my full prompt. So illustration of a colorful and easy to scroll website UI design for selling emoji shaped bags. So that's kind of like my original prompt, but then the details come afterward. The design showcases vibrant product images, playful typography, and an intuitive scrolling mechanism to highlight the unique bags. All right, so we can see that illustrated here. I really love the background here of the header, which is pretty cool. And nothing is like out of proportion, nothing is like looking weird with too many limbs or too many fingers or too many anything here the pencils everything looks great pretty much so that was the first one that was generated i got two different images so this is the next one this looks more like a thank you page or confirmation page when you have made a purchase for example obviously text is not great but i love the aesthetic of this and it's also very consistent with my first page right here so again you can read the whole prompt if you want to. Something else I didn't mention so far is that you can easily download these images with the little download button right here. So you can just click here and the image will be downloaded to your download. So this is the downloaded images in the PNG format. So yeah, you can easily download any of the produced images. You can also download them straight from the prompt page right here. So with this little button right here. All right, let's move on to the next prompt. This next prompt will help you generate hyper realistic images or photos. And it goes like this, a hyper realistic photo of a puffer fish, for example. So there you go. This is my very simple prompt. And these are the two images that ChatGPT generated for me. I particularly like these ones. If you take a closer look at this image, it's incredible. Like the level of details, the realism of this fish, this puffer fish, like the membrane here, the texture, the texture of the skin, the spikes, the eyes that are shining in the right direction. And it just looks amazingly realistic, in my opinion. You can read the entire prompt right here. Also, a cool thing about this is that you can copy the prompt. So if I want to tweak this further, maybe change the color, the direction the fish is like uh, swimming or whatever detail, I can just copy this prompt, paste it back into ChatGPT and just add a few lines of detail or extra instructions for this image to be completely transformed. I will show you that in a second. But for now, just know that you can copy easily, copy your prompt from here. And the second image, this one with a darker background is nothing less amazing than the first one. It's just slightly different color, slightly different lighting, but this is also hyper realistic in my opinion. So yeah, go ahead and try this hyper realistic prompt on something else. Could be a person, an animal, nature, landscape, anything you want really an object sky is the limit your imagination is really the limit my next prompt is going to help you generate cute characters that you can use, for example, in a children's bedtime story or anything else that you like, really. And the prompt goes like this. Create a cute broccoli character for my children's book. That was a very simple prompt. And here are the four broccoli characters that Dali came up with. And they are very cute indeed. Look at this, like big eyes, shiny eyes. And they have slightly different artistic styles. So this one is more more like Japanese anime kind of manga inspired. This one is more like I would say a classic children's sketch, not so much Japanese influence right here. Here the Japanese influence is coming back can see that mostly in the eyes and the way the eyes are round with the little light effects in them. And this one is also more like a watercolor kind of illustration. So four very distinguishable artistic styles here. All right, so that was the generate characters, cute characters prompt. And I have tried this character prompt on some other things, like for example, a fried tofu cube, like this one right here, an illustration of a playful and cartoonish 
fried tofu cube with big expressive eyes and a cheerful smile looking ready for an adventure. I mean, look at how cute this fried tofu is. I mean, who wouldn't bite it? So there you go, some more fried tofu and different styles. This one reminds me of the little WhatsApp cat. I don't remember the name of that cat, but the kind of like the little lines characteristic of this drawing style. And this one right here, all kind of like very much cartoonish anime style. So yeah, there you go. Go have fun with this cute character prompt. This next one is about creating sets of WhatsApp stickers and it goes like this. Create a set of WhatsApp stickers showcasing a koala character in different situations and expressing different emotions. So there you go. I have my two different sets of stickers and with a consistent koala character. This is the first one. This is the second one. And I like that in the prompt, the koala is showcased in various situations like sleeping on a tree, munching on eucalyptus leaves, playing with a toy. The Stickers also capture different emotions like happiness, surprise, and sadness. I like that ChatGPT added that dimension of the emotions in my prompt because really that's what stickers are for when used on an app like WhatsApp. Let's take a look at the second one. So we have different emotions or situation scenarios like reading a book, dancing, and daydreaming like this one right here. All right, so generating sets of stickers also works very well. Now, of course, you can use this in a professional setting. Let's say, for example, I need some illustration for a blog post I'm writing. Well, you can prompt DALL-E with the help of ChatGPT to generate these illustrations for your blog post using a prompt like this one, for example. Generate a few alternatives of blog post images to illustrate a blog post about the future of remote working. That is the topic that you can change. I need them in a landscape aspect ratio, 19 20 by 1080 pixels. So here in this particular prompt, you can see two different variables. The first one is obviously the topic of my blog post. So that will depend on whatever you're writing about. But the second one is the aspect ratio. And as far as I can understand how aspect ratios work right now in DALI 3 and ChatGPT, you can decide between three different aspect ratio. You cannot yet give them like a very precise aspect ratio, say, I want a five by four aspect ratio. I want like a 1320 by 1800 pixel kind of visual like you would do in Canva. This is probably not going to work. However, you can still choose between three main types of aspect ratio, the vertical or portrait mode, the landscape mode, which is what I ask here, or the one by one or squared aspect ratio mode. So that is the squared photo for Instagram, for example. So portrait, landscape and squared. Okay. Okay, so stick to that and you should be fine. Probably in the near future, we'll have more precise aspect ratio, dimensions, resolutions coming. We'll see that coming to DAL-E. But as of today, stick with these three types of aspect ratio. So here I chose the landscape and let me show you the result for my blog post about the future of work. So I have these two different images. All right. So the future of work, we can see two women here working in what seems to be a futuristic city or office space without any glass or very transparent glass, a bunch of drones flying around and screens, kind of huge screens or holograms of screens. We can see the city expanding very far. And yeah, this looks very futuristic. If you want to read the entire prompt, if you want to copy it, if you want to tweak very easily, you can do so from here. I can download my image. Now let's have a look at the second one. Quite different. We see an office space with a very nice representation of the famous IKEA shelf, like drawer shelf right here, wooden desk, what seems to be like an iMac screen, a MacBook Pro computer, maybe the new Apple Vision headset and a robot right here, which is sitting on the floor, hardwood floor, very nice chair, very similar to my chair. This is dreaming, guys. Are you looking at me? ChatGPT? What the heck? Yeah, so very cool blog post illustration in the landscape format. I really like that. And yeah, I think this is well done. Not many hallucinations in here, not many big design mistakes. Maybe the leg of the pair of glasses here is not completely perfect. But for the rest, I mean, this MacBook looks pretty cool. And this iMac screen also looks pretty cool. The keyboard, the Apple mouse, the future of work is clearly inspired by Apple. Just be aware of that. 
All right, let's move on to the next professional prompt. This time, let's say I need a visual to illustrate a social media post. Let's admit we just reached 500,000 subscribers on our channel and we want to celebrate that. So here is a prompt you could use to generate that image. It goes like this. Generate a few one by one aspect ratio images to illustrate a post celebrating 500,000 followers on Instagram. I will post that image together with a post on my Instagram accounts. My audience is made out of fishing aficionados. All right, so I gave Dali a bunch of different information here and everything is between these squared brackets. So you can change that information. I told it that I wanted a one by one or squared aspect ratio. I mentioned that the post is about celebrating 500,000 followers on which platform on Instagram. Okay. And I also gave the AI some guidelines about who my target audience, who my followers are. They are fishing aficionados. So now I expect the visual to be not only on brand and on platform, but also to resonate with my target audience, with my follower base. So let's see what Dali came up with. So these were the first two. And you will see that I reworked this prompt. The first one right here says 5,000 K followers, but it has a very nice illustration going on here, like a lot of fishing gear, fishing rods, fishes and baits. So this is really cool. I like the color scheme. The only problem is the text, right? It shouldn't say five thousand K but 500 K followers. So that is a problem. And then the next one, which says 500 K this time. So this is correct. And this is really nicely done with like fishing nets with the very nice illustration here as well. So this one is correct. So I could use this one directly on my Instagram account if I wanted to. But I wanted to try and fix these typos like these numbers mistake on these images. So what I did is just click on the regenerate button right here. You can always regenerate if you're not satisfied about the outcome. And that's what I did. And here is the outcome I got the second time. So these two new images that look great great, but also had some typos, some spelling mistake. And again, with the number followers seems to be understood by Dali. It can write followers, but it cannot write numbers very well. So here we see like 500,000. Yes, but the comma are a little bit funky. So it should be only one comma. This one right here, this one shouldn't be there. So that's one. And then the other one, again, like problem with the number, problem with the comma. The rest looks great. Like what a pity. And to be completely transparent, I tried and tried and tried to fix this, but it was very hard to get the right text to be displayed on my post. So I kind of gave up. I still had one out of five, this one right here that was correctly written. So I guess I could just fly with this one. All right, my next prompt is about generating a logo for your business, for your brand or for whatever you need. And here I wanted to give Dali a second opportunity to amaze me, to blow my mind using text, right? So I wanted to go to the bottom of this. Can this thing generate logos or images that include text? Because when you look at Dali or OpenAI's documentation or landing pages about this new technology, they showcase some beautiful posters and images that include text and there is no typo in their text, at least in their demonstration. So I thought it must be a way. So let's dig a bit deeper. Can I work with text in DALL-E? So that's the big question. So here is the next prompt I came up with. Give me a few options for a wordmark logo for my company called Fushies. It should be playful and modern. All right. So that is the prompt. And these are the two first attempts from DALL-E to generate my brand logo, my wordmark logo for my brand called Fushies. All right. So we have the first one called Fushies, like the I is missing, Fushies. I completely spelled the word Fushies, but the I is not here. The I is missing on this one. And then we have this one, Fushis with two eyes. So obviously there's a problem here. So what I try to do, and I recommend you do the same whenever Dal E generates some images that are not perfect, you can try to steer back the conversation in the right direction. So I would definitely continue the conversation here. And I said, okay, these look great, but the correct spelling is Fushis. That is F-U-S-H-I. 
I E S. Could you adjust the spelling in the previous design? One thing we need to understand is that DAL E, at least as of today, is not capable of taking the same exact design and make one slight modification to it. It will regenerate another prompt, a similar prompt, but another prompt, and therefore the end result will be slightly different. All right. So from these two images right here, my original images, I got these two right here. You see, they are slightly different. This one is completely different, but this one is also different. If we look closely, this was kind of like a round background with the blue kind of sky inspired background. Now it's squared. The rest is pretty similar, but it's not exactly the same. You see the H, for example, color is very different. So here I have Fuhis now, not Fushis, Fuhis. And here I have Fushis. So this one is actually correctly spelled, but the E is a little bit funky. It looks like an F, or it could be considered as an E, but it's a very different logo than this one. So what I wanted to show you here is when you ask Dal E to reiterate, to correct, or to fix a specific image, it will not regenerate the exact same image. It will create a new prompt and it will therefore generate a slightly different version of your image. But if you prompt enough time, times, you might get something very similar or you might get something even better. So I was not completely happy with this and I really wanted my word to be correctly spelled. So I prompted again and still got one out of two only. And this one is not my favorite one. I would have loved this one to be correctly spelled. And I'm sure if I continued prompting enough times, I eventually would have gotten it right. I could have followed by a prompt saying, okay, I really like the first image. Could you generate something similar? but make sure you write the name of my brand correctly and then spell it again. But at this time, I was a little bit annoyed and I just gave up on trying to get it right because I already had a couple right, like this one is correctly spelled. So my conclusion about working with text, we are and we will probably get there, but as of today, it's still a bit wonky and you will need a lot of patience if you want to get it right. All right, guys, how are we doing? Are you enjoying this tutorial? If you do, I would appreciate if you give me a good old like so that we can push this video to more people right here on YouTube. We have a bunch of other videos about working with AI, ChatGPT, Midjourney, etc. in our generative AI playlist on the channel. I will link that in the description for you if you want to dig deeper. Also, I will have a card at the end of this video. But for now, I would like to wrap up the tutorial with a series of rapid fire tips on how to get the the most out of DALI 3. And this is going to be really fast, don't worry. The first tip is that the more details you provide in your conversation, in your prompt, the better outcome you would get with DALI, e, all right? And we can see that on the DALI landing page right here. If we look at some of the examples that OpenAI provides here, we have some very detailed prompts like this one right here. If you click on the photo, you will access the entire prompt right here. And if you read it, you will see that this is a quite elaborate prompt, but the outcome is quite impressive. Like this tiger divided between the fire and the green part, it's quite nice. Another one, for example, is this poster that again uses the exact good text and looks great. Maybe apart from what's here at the bottom, but Explore Venus is correctly spelled. And again, this is a quite detailed prompt. Let me give you one last example. This one I really love. It's really, really original. A landscape only made out of meat. Now, this is not for vegans for sure, but I thought this was a very original picture that has been generated. Again, quite an elaborated prompt right here. So the conclusion of this is that the more details you give DALI, the better the image will be. Tip number two, and I already talked about this, do not hesitate to follow up, to correct your prompt, to readjust the direction of where this is going, or simply use the regenerate button to create some new variations of your image. Tip number three, ask more of the same. If among the outputs that have been generated by Dal E, there is one that you particularly like, ask the AI to generate more of the same. So for example, say, I really like picture number one here. Can you generate more of the same? And it will do so. Tip number four, explain which aspect ratio you would like the picture to be generated in. Again, three different aspect ratios ratio, squared, landscape, 
portrait. That's all we have for now, but let's hope OpenAI adds more and more precise aspect ratios in the future. Tip number five, you can zoom in or out on your picture. That is to have a different type of framing. So you could use keywords like close up. You could use keyword like mid shot, long shot, open shot, wide shot. What I would recommend is that you do a little bit of research about photography and the different types of framing, and then use these keywords in your prompt to achieve specific results. Results. And to make the lives of our members easier, I will add these keywords in the little Canva document I have prepared for you. And then finally, tip number six, you can ask DALI to modify your photo. You can ask it to change the colors, for example, to change the artistic style of a specific image, to change the medium. Maybe instead of watercolor, you want a hyper-realistic photo, or you want a vectorized graphic, whatever. That's the medium. Or you can also change the light lighting style, like give some instruction about lighting to the AI. So changing any of these variables will result in a different image. All right, so quickly before I leave you, I'm going to answer two questions that I can see coming already from here. Number one, can I use these images for commercial use or for client projects? Or can I just sell these images if I generate them? Well, the good news is that if you generate them with DAL E3 in ChatGPT, the answer is yes. And we can find this information right here, black on white, or let's say white on blue, on OpenAI's website. It says, as with DAL E2, the images you create with DAL E3 are yours to use and you don't need our permission to reprint, sell, or merchandise them. So this is very clear, guys. You can use these images for commercial purposes. And then the last thing I want to touch on before I leave you is, can I really generate anything with DAL E? And the answer is no, because OpenAI has put some safeguards. There are some stuff that you will not be able to generate because they want to make this tool safe for anyone to use and not offend anyone. And again, you can read more about that on OpenAI's DAL E3 landing page. But basically, there are three things you will not be able to do with DAL E is to generate potentially harmful imagery, including violent, adult, or hateful content. You will not be able to generate content in the style of living artists, images, or public figures. So you can forget about generate this in the style of Banksy or generate this in the style of Picasso, this prompt will not be accepted. That is a smart way to prevent all of the copyright infringement issues because these artists are not always happy that we can just emulate their style with a single prompt. So this here, this limitation of not being able to copy the style of living artists, images or public figures is going to help prevent that. All right. And third and lastly, you cannot upload images to be used as reference as of today. So you cannot upload an image of yourself and ask DALI to turn you into a cute broccoli character. That will not work. There are ways around that. That might be for another tutorial. But for now, this is not something you can do. All right, guys, that is it for today. As I promised, for those of you who are members of our channel, meaning who are part of our paid membership, you will have access to a document. And in that document, there will be a bonus for you with 50 different keywords. And these are 50 different articles styles that you can try while prompting DAL E. All right, so that's it for today. I'm going to leave you guys with our generative AI playlist right here in which you will find plenty of tutorials like this one. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.